Welcome to DataVids. We're going to talk about extension methods, and I'm going to give you examples using Visual Studio in .NET 7. This isn't new technology with .NET 7. It's been around, but our examples will be in .NET 7. And we'll get right into the code, but really quickly, extension methods is a way for you to extend an existing type, add new methods to an existing type without modifying the code on that type. Instead, you'll be building a static class that's separate from that type but you will not be calling it as if they were static methods. Instead, you'll be calling it as if it was an instance method in that type that you didn't modify. This may sound confusing, but it's really easy. Let's get right into it, and I think you'll agree with me that it is easy. Let's begin. So I have here a console application, again, .NET 7, and we're going to go ahead and right-click on the project and add a new class. This will be our static class. Let's call this the DataVids Extensions class. We will change it from being internal to being a public static class. And here's where we get into the interesting stuff, guys. We will do a public static. Now the return type of whatever our extension method is going to send back. And in this case, I'm going to do a string the name of it. So let's let's say that our extension method, we're going to extend the string class and we're going to make it add spaces and dollar signs in between each letter. I'm not sure if that's a practical application for you, but it might be. <laughs> let's call it add spaces and dollars. And we will take in here, first of all, you're going to put the keyword this, and that is very important when it comes to extension method. That always has to start with this. Then you're going to take in the type that we're adding an extension to, which is the type string. And then we'll just whatever you want to name your parameter. So we'll call it incoming, a incoming string. How's that? All right. So now let's go ahead and do our magic. Let's define our, our results first. So I'm going to go ahead and do var result equal to string dot empty. Let's just create an empty string. So we know that it's result. So we're going to return result at the end. Get that over with. You don't have to worry about it. You can set a breakpoint here if you'd like to see what it's going to be, but you don't have to. And now let's go ahead and put an intermediate variable. We break that incoming string into a character array. And this has nothing to do with extension methods. This is just a quick example. And I and I was thinking I should probably show you the logic on how I get there. So why don't we do var my car array for character is equal to incoming string dot two car array two character array now let's do a for loop you probably like for each better so do i but for scoping issues sometimes it's better to do a for loop that way i can modify the elements inside that for loop without having to worry that maybe it's not out of scope so in this case i'm gonna do a regular for loop but you can do a for each just be careful not to just modify that item in there if you do a for each you still have to reach out to here so it's best to do a for loop in this case. Int my iterator i equal to zero. i is less than my character array dot length or dot count. I like to use dot count. Count is the full count of it. So um, that, let's say there's uh, five items. Count will be five. So if we're starting at zero, if you're going to do less than equal to, you can do count minus one. If you're doing just less than, then you can do count. Uh, I plus plus and we're going to go ahead and now do the modifications to add the spaces and dollars so why don't we do result is equal to result plus or you could just say result plus equal which is a shorthand notation and we'll do plus equal to my character array at position I plus and now here we can add our spaces and dollars so if we wanted to have, for instance, the dollar sign, then the letter, then a space, then you might want to add it here. So we'll do dollar sign plus the letter and then the space or whatever you want to do there. And that should do it. Time for the easy part. This is the dessert after your delicious meal. So <laughs> we're working with a string, but we still have to define that string. So you could type string or you can use var. I'm just using string to make it really clear that we did an extension on the type string. So if you were working on, say, uh, a class named my animal, it would be 
my animal. You have to define that 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 type first. So string my string is equal to data vids rocks. And now we will go my string dot and we can call the method that we just created. That was add spaces and dollars. So add spaces and dollars. Now that method didn't output anything. It returned something. So we are going to do my string equals because it's going to return it. It's going to manipulate it and return it, right? Now let's put that to the output. Let's do a console dot write line my string and we want it to wait so it doesn't disappear off the screen right away. So we'll do a console dot read line. And I'm going to go ahead and run it by pressing F5. And as you can see, there's a dollar sign before each character and a space after each character. Got our output we expected. So that is extension methods. Most extension methods that I see people using have to do with link or ienumerable. But you can do like we just did here and extend your own class or you, I'm sorry, and extend the string class or one of your own classes.